Welcome to The Commute, a Bible study podcast designed to turn your commute into an opportunity to grow in your faith. Whether you're sure of what you believe or you're not sure what to believe, this podcast is designed to help you better understand who Jesus is, what the Bible's all about, and how that applies to your life today. I'm your host, Pastor Matt, and I'm excited to dive into this week's episode of The Commute. Friends, welcome back to another episode of The Commute. It is great to be with you, uh, preparing for another week of your Bible reading journey. We, this week, I've decided are going to uh, take a look at one psalm that uh, you're encountering this coming week. So even if you haven't been going through the, the psalms as a part of your regular habits, I would encourage you to spend a little bit of time in Psalm 107. We're going to talk about it today. And uh, the first time I think I was encouraged to pause on this psalm was um, on the day of my ordination, actually. So uh, when when a pastor gets ordained, often what happens is there are lots of other pastors who will come and lay their hands on the ordinee, and they will speak uh, words of blessing over him, words of encouragement, and often they'll share a Bible verse. And uh, there was one pastor uh, at uh, the ordination for my brother and me. Uh, his name is Pastor Suflo. He was one of our pastors growing up as kids. And uh, I've always kind of looked to him as a pillar in pastoral ministry. Um, he's always been someone uh, I count as a kind of uh, sage uh, in, in ministry. And uh, it was just really great for, for him to be there. He had served at, at my home congregation since way before I was born, I think even, even decades before I was born. And he's, uh, and he's still an emeritus there. He is uh, an amazing man. And uh, at my ordination, he, he laid his hands on, on me and he spoke some words from Psalm 107. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and share some of these words. Uh, this is, it's verse 2 is what he shared. He said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and the south. That opening phrase, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, uh, was just a, a really encouraging word for me on that day to consider, yeah, let, let the people who have been on the receiving end of God's work, let them say so. Let him declare it. Let all the people whom he's gathered from the four ends of the earth, let him talk about it. I think those are words worth dwelling on for a few minutes today. So we're just going to march through Psalm 107, um, section by section, and talk about it along the way. I, I found that the Psalms are helpful for me as a reader of the Bible to slow down. A lot of my Bible reading habits are more rapid than they should be. I'm the kind of person who likes to move at a relatively fast pace and I like achieving goals. I like being able to, to cross things off, off my list. I like to feel accomplished at the end of the day because secretly, friends, I'm the kind of person who just wants to sit on the couch, watch Netflix, and eat potato chips. So I want to do everything else I'm supposed to do, all of the good things I'm supposed to do. I want to do them, and I want to do them quickly so that I can get to uh, a point where I can be a, a human vegetable. Now, that there's probably a, a darker side in that. Um, so that's why, for me, Psalms are really helpful because they force me to slow down. They compel me to grapple with the poetic language they present. And in that grappling effort, that slow grappling effort, I think it is there that God meets me and reveals his character to me. And it's my prayer that uh, he might do something similar for you today, uh, especially if you're someone listening uh, from New Jersey where life can be very fast paced and kind of frenzied, I think uh, psalms are, are tremendous gifts for us uh, just to dial it back a little bit, to pump the brakes. So uh, this psalm really is um, 
divided into, well, maybe it's not actually four sections, but there are, are four time, there are four kind of repeat experiences where there are people who are in trouble and in need of the Lord's help and they cry out to him and he responds and he brings them out of trouble. And each of the, the four experiences is a bit different from the other. They're, they're, they're nuanced in a way. And each time we see something, something new and marvelous about the character of God. So without any further ado, let's jump in. So the first two verses are a kind of introduction here. Verse one, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Those, those are lines that pop up other places in, in the Psalms as well. And they're kind of a, a refrain for the people of God. God is good and his steadfast love endures forever. Now verse two, verses two and three, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and the south. Picture God who is taking all of the people that he has um, redeemed out of trouble. He's bringing them all together. And now they have the opportunity to speak to one another how God has has redeemed them. That's the picture that comes to, to my mind as I read these verses. Now, let's, let's distinguish these people. Who are the ones that he's redeemed from trouble? Well, verse 4 through 9 tells us about some of them. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Now, I don't know where your mind goes. My mind goes numerous places when I consider people who have, have wandered, people who are longing, people who are hungry. I imagine uh, the Israelites as they're wandering through the wilderness. That might be the, the uh, most immediate example that, that comes to my mind, how the Lord delivered them out of trouble uh, many, many times um, out of Egypt and then delivered them out of, out of trouble on a series of occasions when they're actually wandering in the wilderness and how he leads them by a, by a straight way. And like in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses talks about how the Lord has provided for their every need as they've gone on this journey. That's, that's one place my mind goes to. I think another place uh, your imagination could go to is uh, God's people who are in exile, people who've found no way uh, to the city they want to, to dwell in. They're, they're far from where they're supposed to be and they feel a bit uh, adrift and he, he brings them back and leads them by a straight way. And I think ver verse 9, I think this applies to, to any day and age. The Lord satisfies the, long, the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. I mean, spiritually speaking, all of us encounter moments where, where we are longing to be filled, where we are yearning for satisfaction. And it is the Lord who provides ultimate satisfaction. So these are some of the people the, the Lord has, has redeemed from the ends of the earth. Let's hear about the, the next kind of people. This is verses 10 through 16 now. It says, Some sat in darkness and the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. So now, for, for others, the, the problem isn't wandering in desert wastes. The problem is imprisonment. Verse 11 now, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. 
Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Notice these are repeated words here. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Boy, the imagination, again, could run any number of directions. Uh, my imagination runs to, to Joseph, sold by his brothers uh, to Egypt and imprisoned unjustly and remains in prison uh, for longer than he should have. And Joseph remains faithful and the Lord delivers him out of prison. Uh, similarly, in the New Testament, there are uh, a couple of occasions in the book of Acts where the apostles find themselves imprisoned and the Lord sends an angel and breaks, the, breaks their chains opens the doors and leads them out. Um, and isn't that what, what the Lord does for us? For those who were, those of us who were trapped by our own sin and brokenness, enchained by our failure to be who God created us to be, he sent Jesus to break those chains, to set us free and to to shatter the doors of bronze and cut into the bars of iron. And I think as we walk through this and, and hear some of the, the repeat words, I'm, I'm finding that these are words for, for me just to, to say, yeah, let, let them, or maybe even make it more personal, let me thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous, wondrous works to the children of man, his wondrous works to me. So we've got two more now. This is kind of a, a long psalm. Let's hear about the, the third kind of people. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. So a third category, they're not wandering in, in the desert, nor are they imprisoned. These are people who are, who are struggling because of their own sinful ways. Verse 18 now, they loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds and songs of joy. I think here what I imagine is a lot of the, the healing acts of Jesus. People who are... Uh, who are suffering from, from the weight of sin and the weight of sin, the way it's manifested in, in their life is uh, through some kind of disease or by being crippled or, uh, or something of, of that nature. And Jesus, like verse 20 here, he sends out his word and he heals them. You know, there are some, some that Jesus heals with, with his touch and there are some that, that Jesus heals just with a word. And from that moment... They're, they're healed and no longer suffering from the thing that plagued them. And often the response to Jesus is, you know, people who are, are overjoyed, people who are, are, are thankful, people who are either like e eager to, to follow Jesus and, and Jesus has to tell them like, hey, no, d no, it's like stay, stay here and, and tell how much God has done for you. Like when he heals the, the demon-possessed man um, in, uh, uh, across the Sea of Galilee. Uh, I think that's, that's where my mind goes. And again, is, isn't it true for us? Aren't we the ones who, because of our, our iniquities, were, were suffering affliction? And isn't it to us that God sends his word? He sends his word and... An absolution as we worship. He sends out his word as we proclaim it to one another. Uh, he sends out his, his word uh, through the, the sacramental gifts he, he delivers to us. And by that word, he, he heals us. And aren't we people who, again, just have to thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Now the final cycle, starting at verse 23. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. 
They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of, waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm still, and the waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad that the waters were quiet. He brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. So here God is, is the God who, who rescues those uh, in the peril of the storm. And I can't help but, but think of Jesus calming the storm with his disciples as they're sailing across the, the Sea of Galilee. Jesus speaks a word and whew, the sea is quiet. The winds die down. Everything is serene. I think of uh, Paul toward the end of the book of Acts, chapter 27, uh, as he's uh, shipwrecked with the, the rest of the passengers uh, on the boat and the Lord spares them all. I, I even consider Jonah uh, in, in his sailing and um, the Lord ag again and again is, is the person who, who delivers out of the storm and, and isn't it true for, for us? I mean, I think you see the pattern here that, that the psalm is kind of a, an invitation for us to consider the, the works of God in the past and in considering his past action, um, have our eyes open to his action in the present. And um, isn't it true for, for us who deal with the, the storms of life, who, who get tossed back and forth by, by the winds of so much that prevails in our day? Uh, similarly, Jesus is the one who, who brings calm, who brings peace, who uh, takes us out of the, the chaotic, stormy experience and, and places us uh, close to himself. And what, what can we do but, verse 22, let, let them, let us extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. This is this is, again, kind of a, a return to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them consider what God has done for them and let them talk about it. Let them say, even in, in specific detail, how the Lord has, has redeemed me. Consider your, your own story, friends. How, if you are a follower of Jesus, how, how has the Lord worked to redeem you? What has he, he brought you out of? Uh, how has he led you? How has he healed you? How has he set you free? You have uh, something that's, that's very specific, something that's personal. Say so. Let all the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's finish the, the psalm out now. So now that we've had kind of this fourfold cycle, we have uh, just a, an, an ending that keeps talking about the, the mighty acts of God. Verse 33, he turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry dwell, and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their livestock diminish. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, evil, and sorrow. He pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness shuts its mouth. Then the last verse, listen to this. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. You go through this cycle this fourfold cycle of how, how the Lord redeems his people. You get a section talking about the, the uh, sustained power of God, how he continues to, to, to do mighty things. And the result of this entire psalm is, is really to get wisdom. Like if you want to be wise, attend to these things. 
Consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Consider his action. Consider it in history, in the past. Consider it in, in the present. Consider it on a large scale, a, a cosmic scale. Consider it on a, on a micro scale, a personal scale. And in considering these things, let wisdom come. That's something I, I desire, friends. And I would imagine many of, many of you desire too. And I believe it's, it's through, through the experience of reading God's word and specifically reading psalms like these that, that true wisdom does come in slowing down, in taking some unhurried time with the Lord and simply contemplating who he is and, and what he's done. I find that I walk away from this time in, in God's word really feeling like, like I've gained something. And I don't even think it's uh, too much of a stretch to say that that there is some wisdom gained, even from just the, this conversation. And I hope you are, you are feeling the same way. So we'll wrap it up there. I uh, would encourage you, dwell, dwell on this psalm a little longer. If you've, if you've got some time, uh, listen to it this week as you're, as you're walking, as you're driving, as you're doing the dishes. Um, if you're able to, to read it, read it in the morning, read it at night. Um, and take note of how you are being worked on as, as you read. And, and let this be an invitation to you uh, either to keep reading the Psalms or if you haven't been reading the Psalms, jump in. Uh, most of them are not very long, but uh, I think you'll find some, some, really, some really rich and some really beautiful stuff as, as you dig into them. So that's going to be a wrap for us today on The Commute. Uh, blessings to you as you read God's word this week. And we will see you next week right here on The Commute. Thanks for checking out this episode of The Commute. For more information on The Commute or to join the Commute Bible Reading Plan, simply download the Bethlehem Church Live mobile app or go to Bethlehem Church Live slash The Commute.